Okay, uh, today's session is on performance evaluation. The abbreviation is uh, PE in singular RFL again. Okay, here uh, there are seven objectives uh, to be achieved by you after studying this chapter and listening to the lecture successfully. Definition of performance evaluation. A management theorist, uh, Gluick, Professor William F. Gluick, defines performance evaluation as the personal activity by means of which the enterprise determines the extent to which the employee is performing the job effectively. Sapala lesser, seva daikya, si rakyava, itukan labanu pramanya, nishche kiri mata, ayatne visin, rudanganu labana, seva mandala kalamanaka karya. William F. Okay, so then here the enterprise means the organization, right? Personal activity, human resource management function. Uh, then Stuhl and Youngblood, uh, analyzing effective personal management, define performance appraisal as a system of measuring, evaluating, and influencing. An employee's job-related attributes, behaviors, and outcomes, and the level of absenteeism to discover at what level the employee is presently performing on the job. Okay, the job-related attributes, such as uh, theoretical knowledge of the job, um, practical knowledge of the job, honesty of the employee, uh, these are uh, job-related attributes. Then the behaviors include the uh, attendance, punctuality, cooperation, etc. Then outcomes are the things that the particular employee has produced within a particular period of time, period of time that is considered for performance evaluation. Then level of absenteeism, level of absenteeism, the number of days the employee was absent, the number of days the employee was absent, right. Okay, uh, then, uh, <clears throat> Here the, the, the Stuhl and Youngblood, so they have used the term performance appraisal instead of performance evaluation. So performance appraisal can be considered as an alternative term to performance evaluation. Performance evaluation. In performance evaluation, yes, here look at this definition. Performance evaluation is a systematic process by which the organization determines the degree to which the employee is performing the job in relation to the set norms and the standards for a particular period of time and identifies the employee potential for development. So here the set norms and the standards, the identifies the employee potential for development. The employee's potential for development. Okay, so then perform an evaluation indeed is a systematic process. Systematic process that is used to determine the extent to which the particular employee is performing the job in relation to uh, performance targets. Let me say performance targets for a particular period of time. So there must be a particular period of time. That may be one month, that may be three months, that may be uh, uh, six months, that may be uh, one year. Okay, so look at this image. So uh, these are the employees. Okay, this is the person who does the evaluation. Uh, we can label that person as uh, the evaluator. So these are the values uh, whose performance is going to be evaluated. Okay, so then uh, look at this image, uh, performance appraisal, performance appraisal. So this, uh, this person seems to be the person who does the performance evaluation, the performance appraisal, that's the alternative term uh, for performance evaluation. <clears throat> Mainly here, for as far as this lecture is concerned, we use the term performance 
uh, evaluation, performance evaluation. Okay, have a serious look at this uh, picture. What can you see? Performance evaluation. So uh, here we can, here you can see the relevant employee, relevant employee. So then here the this word trades, trades mean qualities. Examples: uh, honesty of the employee, honesty of the employee. Uh, theoretical knowledge of the job, practical knowledge of the job, patient of the employee, uh, they are qualities. They are qualities possessed by the particular employee. Then behaviors. The behaviors are action activities to be performed by the employee, to be performed by the employee. They may include attendance, punctuality, cooperation, planning, controlling, organizing, directing, in case of a manager, then resource, resource are the outputs that the employee has produced, the quantity of the work, quantity of the work, the number, in case of a salesman, then the number of units sold, number of new uh, customers created, so in case of a university teacher, number of lectures done, number of lectures done, in case of a researcher, number of research studies done. Number of research studies done. In case of a, a medical doctor, number of patients cured, number of patients treated. Uh, they are the results. They are the results. So therefore, uh, when we evaluate job performance of a particular employee, uh, that can be done in terms of traits, behaviors, and results. Then here, look at uh, the uh, these uh, four words. Yes. Uh, identify, measure, influence, and develop. So, perform an evaluation. Perform an evaluation is the human resource management function that identifies, measures, influences, and develops. Develops traits, behaviors, and uh, results of the employee. Results of the employee within a particular period of time within a particular period of time, so usually six months. Uh, usually six months. Uh, some organizations uh, use uh, do performance evaluation for every year, for every year. Then the period, the particular period of time is uh, 12 months, one year. For variety of purposes. So therefore, performance evaluation is done to achieve uh, various purposes, various purposes which uh, you will have to learn. After this, I will teach about uh, purposes of performance evaluation. Okay, right. Now, uh, importance importance of uh, performance evaluation. So under the subtopic, purposes, purposes of performance evaluation. These purposes can be grouped into two categories. Uh, first one, first category, administrative purposes. Second category, development purposes. So what do you mean by administrative purposes? Performance evaluation provides a set of information needed to perform successfully many HR functions, many HR functions uh, such as uh, human power planning, human power planning, pay management, so likewise. So then uh, I will discuss in brief each uh, uh, human resource uh, function, uh, which has, I mean, which is supported, which is supported by this uh, performance evaluation. You know, one of the steps of human power planning or human resource planning is to estimate human resource supply. So estimating human resource supply involves auditing current human resources, which means assessing characteristics of current employee 
so as to develop skill inventories and management inventory so which uh, which uh, catalog which catalog uh, competencies of yes competences of each existing employee each existing employee okay right uh, each existing uh, employee so then uh, to develop these inventories of course performance evaluation information is uh, needed so under human resource planning i discuss these things so in order to save time uh, i'm not going to detail uh, then uh, reward management so basically it involves uh, reward involves wages salary incentives so in order to uh, decide pay increments for the particular employee after working uh, for a particular period of time uh, it is necessary to uh, have an evaluation of the job performance so performance evaluation is needed performance evaluation information is needed uh, in order to decide whether the relevant employee should be paid with pay increments also uh, then if increments are to be paid so assume the employee's performance was excellent then how much should we pay in the government sector the value of the increment is usually that is fixed that has been fixed but in the private sector it is it is normally it is not fixed so therefore depending on the productivity depending on the on the topics uh, different uh, values uh, can be applicable then uh, should performance incentives be paid if there are performance incentives uh, available for the employees then we want to decide whether uh, these employees deserve to be paid with performance incentive uh, for that we have to do performance evaluation performance evaluation then management of promotions management of promotions basically there are two criteria uh, that can be used for giving uh, promotions giving promotions one is seniority the other one is merit or the competency competency so competency refers to the degrees of efficiency and effectiveness of the employee so in order to decide in order to decide the efficiency of the employee the effectiveness of the employee within a particular period of time we have to do a performance evaluation and then having uh, determined the efficiency and effectiveness of the employee we can decide whether uh, this employee can be promoted to the next job, job of uh, higher rank, job of higher rank. Then administration of transfers, administration of transfers. Uh, should we, you know, should, should we transfer a particular employee? So we want to decide. Uh, then uh, we should do perform an evaluation, right? Uh, as far as the current job is concerned. Can the employee perform this job successfully or assume uh, or, or can't uh, then you know to decide that we have to do a performance evaluation and having done the performance evaluation then we can decide uh, whether we should uh, transfer this particular employee assume the employee cannot perform the job but there is another job in another department which the employee can perform successfully and then we can transfer this employee to that department to perform uh, that job so administration of transfers then discipline administration discipline administration discipline of course is a very very important thing for productivity uh, and for various other uh, business purposes so therefore if an employee violates a certain rule he or she uh, should be punished through a disciplinary action uh, fundamental when determining the degree of severity of disciplinary action again a binaya kriya margi tarumatir nekiri performance evaluation information is useful performance evaluation information is useful disciplinary action may be a termination may be a salary uh, cut may be a uh, demotion may be a demotion hmm? uh, so therefore we want to decide which punishment should be given to the particular employee who has been wrong, who has violated a certain rule or rules of discipline 
for that we should know whether this person is an efficient, you know, uh, an excellent person, excellent perform, low perform, high perform. We want to know. Right. Then selection. So under selections, usually we uh, we use uh, selection techniques such as examinations, uh, interviews. So we want to know whether these examinations, these uh, interviews are valid or not. Really, they 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 uh, select suitably qualified people, uh, most appropriate people, uh, the person or the people, you know, the, the right people. Do the do 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 our examinations, do our examinations, select the right uh, people, or uh, reject right people. So it is possible that an examination does rejecting the right people but accepting wrong people so therefore we want to test the validity of the examination validity of the examination for that purpose also we have to do performance evaluation so these uh, you know uh, test validation these things are uh, are not uh, you know are not expected uh, normally they are not the uh, matters or subject matters on the human resource management for you they are relevant for students who specialize in uh, human resource management. But anyway, uh, you know that there is something like this selection, right? Then uh, hiring. Hiring. So generally, when an employee is hired for a permanent job, he or she has to spend a certain period of time that is called probationary period. So which also I taught you under uh, hiring, under hiring function, right? Then as far as this probationary period is concerned, uh, there are three basic uh, decisions. There are three basic decisions. First one is extending the period for another point of time. Second one, terminating the period and giving the confirmation status. Third one, stopping the period and dismissing the probationary employee. Extending, normally, uh, if the assume a particular person we are considering, to assume that person uh, worked his sort of job uh, for six months and then we did a performance evaluation. We did a performance evaluation, then we uh, understood that the person is not really a, a right performer, but that person has uh, performed the duties to a certain extent. So then we can have a hope about this person. So therefore, uh, rather than terminating, we give an extension. We give an extension. Terminating the period and giving the confirmation status. In case of the employee who was judged, who was judged uh, as the right performer, high performer, then of course we have to give the confirmation. Assume the employee is a hopeless employee, uh, wrong employee, uh, then uh, we have to stop the period of probationary, probation, and then we have to dismiss the probationary employee. So therefore, these are the three alternative uh, decisions regarding the probation period. So one decision has to be taken out of these three. One decision will have to be uh, taken with regard to the particular employee after finishing his or her probation period. So therefore, you know, we are supposed to make, the manager is supposed to make the right decision. And then how to make the right decision? Of course, uh, performance evaluation information will be essential for making that right decision. Then uh, management of uh, labor uh, management relationship. Labor management relationship includes various interactions, various relationships between trade unions and senior managers. So basically trade unions and managers. Managers are not usually members of the trade unions. Members of the trade unions are the uh, non manager employees, usually. Uh, usually, there may be organizations uh, which have trade unions for managers also, but uh, under this, we usually we consider managers and uh, non managers. So, non managers are members of the become, become members of the trade unions. So, therefore, managers will have to maintain a good relationship with workers and there are trade unions. Otherwise, otherwise there is no industrial 
fees. If there is no industry team, that means there are uh, picketings, there are strikes, there are problems, conflicts, conflicts between managers and uh, trade union people. So therefore, in order to maintain a good relationship between trade unions and management, so it is important to have uh, accurate and fair uh, performance evaluation. Accurate and fair performance evaluation. So especially when we distribute uh, rewards, when we distribute salaries, you know, when we when we when we pay salaries, we mean say the particular organization salaries. When we give promotions, uh, they have to be given in fair way, in fair way. So therefore, it is good to do performance evaluation, and based on uh, performance evaluation results, it is better to decide promotions, layoff, transfers, incentives, etc. Right. Okay. Then now development purposes. Development purposes. Performance evaluation is useful uh, for management development. Management development. The first one is training. A training. So training is a very important thing uh, for achieving various purposes, uh, <clears throat> uh, which we will, you know, you will have to learn later under a separate lecture. Under a separate lecture. So it is essential to identify needs of employees before developing a training program. So before developing a training program, program it is essential to identify needs or weaknesses or areas of improvement of employees and for improvements of uh, employees. So in order to identify training needs, areas of improvement, it is essential to do performance evaluation. It is essential to do performance evaluation. So therefore, uh, identifying performance deficiencies of employees. Performance evaluation uh, for identifying uh, performance deficiencies or defects or weaknesses, gaps of employees, performance evaluation is an effective source. Right. Then uh, success of training programs. Success of training programs. So training so after after implementing a certain training program we want to know this we want to know whether that training program was successful or not in order to do that also we have to do performance evaluation uh, before the training and also after the training so we have to assess the job behavior of the employee the knowledge of the employee job behavior of the employee for that we have to do uh, performance evaluation then pro proper direction proper direction so it is possible for a superior for the boss to obtain information through performance evaluation so which is useful for his guiding or her guiding or advising subordinate guiding and advising subordinate so the uh, when when the employee when the superior needs to advise subordinate the superior can use the performance evaluation information and based on performance evaluation information the superior will be able to identify uh, the matters for advising the subject matters for advising guiding so therefore performance evaluation is useful for proper direction proper supervision then this d better productivity of course productivity you know it's a very very important thing so with, without productivity there is no organization success there's no organizational development there's no employee development so therefore productivity <clears throat> basically that's the relationship between inputs and outputs inputs and outputs in simple the number of uh, units produced number of units produced so 
performance evaluation increases increases mutuality between each subordinate and superior it generates and encourages favorable employee subordinate relations relations and proper performance evaluation reduces employee anxiety as they know how they are performing the monad karanna mukadda rajya karya karanna ne kiyana keva hariyata seva da kya danna tam prashna ekta etara kohoma da hariyata pala pala da itwa athi karanna yani productivity so pala productivity gila kiyanne o pala da ithawa pala da ithawa athi karanna kohoma kiyana prashne ema thiyena nisa but if they are clear you know the monad kalayutte monad laga kara katayutte monad adala kala seema tuladi ඉතු කරගත විලක් ඒවත් පැහැදිලිව සඳහන් වෙනවා නම් there is no employee anxiety and anxiety is a psychological problem so right is stress employee stress so then there is no employee stress you know if there are proper definitions of duties if there are proper definitions of targets or objectives to be achieved by the employee so these things can happen if there is good performance evaluation so therefore all these things will contribute to better productivity of the employee and then uh, better productivity of the organization okay so then you can understand uh, how performance evaluation contributes to human resource management functions have a look at this so it shows uh performance evaluation contributes to uh, these hr functions so this figure shows how performance evaluation i mean what are the hr functions to which performance evaluation contributes human power planning human resource planning so selection hiring training promotion uh, reward management transfer uh, discipline administration discipline administration okay so then if i uh, tell again human resource planning in order to decide skill inventories and management inventories performance evaluation is needed and the selection in order to decide uh, in order to decide whether selection methods are successful or not in terms of validity performance evaluation is essential then hiring uh, in order to make the right decision about Uh, the probation period of probationary employees performance evaluation is needed then under training in order to identify training needs of the employee performance evaluation is needed in order to identify uh, success of training programs performance evaluation is needed then promotion uh, in order to give promotions it is essential to determine competency the merit efficiency and effectiveness of the Particular employee within the particular period of time. For that, performance evaluation is essential. The reward management, in order to decide whether the employee should be paid with the salary increments, then the how much uh, should be paid, and then whether the incentive should be paid to the employee to decide all this. Uh, performance evaluation is essential. Then, in order to decide transfers, performance evaluation will be useful. Performance evaluation. will be useful then uh, discipline administration in order to decide the gravity of the disciplinary action performance evaluation will be useful okay all right now shall we go to the next uh, sub topic of this uh, topic that is performance evaluation and the sub topic is overview of the process of performance evaluation so performance evaluation of course can be viewed as a process can be viewed as a process so that contains uh, certain uh, distinct distinct steps you see figure this figure this one figure two process of performance evaluation have a look this is the process of performance evaluation how many steps it has Ten steps. The first one establish objectives of performance evaluation. That's the first one. Objectives of performance evaluation. 
and the second one to formulate policies of performance evaluation policies of performance evaluation third one establish criteria and standards of performance evaluation then the fourth step select method or methods of performance evaluation fifth one design performance evaluation form and procedure form and procedure then uh, number six train evaluators number seven do the actual appraisal or evaluation and after doing the evaluation then the number eight is uh, to have a discussion uh, of uh, performance evaluation results then number nine make decisions the relevant decisions and then is talk then uh, last step according to our, our model of performance evaluation that is review and uh, renewal review and renewal so the uh, brief uh, discussion uh, has been given in the north so therefore please study them depending on the on the time so i will cover uh, more important things okay step one uh, establishing objectives of performance evaluation that's the first step of the process so why should we do performance evaluation that we have to decide the particular organization so I assume there is a particular organization that wants to do perform an evaluation. So therefore that organization first has to decide why. So what are the purposes? So what are the objectives that the organization wants to achieve by doing performance evaluation? So these are some examples of uh, performance evaluation objectives. To ascertain the current level of job performance of each employee. To ascertain strengths and weaknesses of employees in order to train employees, right? Then to identify training needs of each employee so as to improve each employee's job performance. Then to ascertain potential performance and develop the needs so as to develop the employee for promotion. Employees there are high performers, so therefore we want to identify high performers who can be promoted, who can be promoted to do. Uh, jobs of higher rank, higher responsibilities. Then to provide a fair and objective rationally in order to reward employees, paying salaries, paying incentives, paying incentives, uh, <clears throat> you know, giving welfare facilities, various welfare facilities. So there's a need of uh, having a fair and objective rationally. Rationally, you know. Fair and objective. Vastavita uh, objective. Tartika Padanama. Rationally. Fair and objective rationally in order to reward employees. So these are you know, some examples of uh, performance evaluation objectives. So any organization can uh, establish these objectives. Indeed, you know, based on based on uh, purposes you know, these, these purposes so we have discussed administrative purposes and uh, development purposes administrative purposes and development purposes so administrative purposes are the uh, objectives which are relating to making various administrative decisions uh, with regard to employees such as uh, promotions transfers the management, human resource planning, selection, or uh, right. So then, development purposes also to develop employees, to develop the organization's productivity through the development of uh, employee productivity, for training, uh, assessing success of training programs, giving proper proper direction. Okay, right. So the based on these purposes also, it is possible to formulate. Our objectives. Okay, right. Uh, then, then the second step: uh, formulate uh, policies of performance evaluation. So let us try to uh, learn uh, this step in uh, detail. In detail. <coughs>
Okay, here we have the right. Now we'll look this uh, process in one uh, PowerPoint uh, yeah, slide. <clears throat> so in one PowerPoint slide, on, on one slide you can see the entire picture, the process of performance evaluation. Okay, so now we are going to discuss this one. Of course, uh, you are not supposed to have an in-depth uh, detail understanding about each uh, step uh, but anyway uh, certain uh, steps are more important so I will discuss about them and then those things that I discuss of course uh, you should try to understand and of course you are supposed to have that understanding okay then uh, <coughs> right now the objectives Discuss then the, this one formally policies of uh, performance values. So, then, uh, <clears throat> so these are the uh, there are four policy issues. There are four policy issues. Uh, there are uh, these, these, uh, look at the, the there are four, four questions about which clear cut policy decisions will have to be made. Distinct policy, policy decisions will have to be made with regard to these uh, four questions, four problems. What is the first one? Whose performance should be evaluated? Second one, when should performance evaluation be done? Third one, how often should performance evaluation be done? And the fourth one, who should do performance evaluation? Who should do? Performance evaluation. Okay, take the first one. Whose performance should be evaluated? Of course, there are many types of employees uh, within a particular organization. They may be permanent employees. Of course, they not maybe. They they are permanent employees. Then uh, temporary employees, casual employees, part-time employees, full-time employees, contract-based employees. So there there can be. There may be different types of employee. So then uh, we will have these alternatives. We will have these alternatives. So we can do performance evaluation only for permanent employees. Or we can do performance evaluation only for permanent and temporary employees. Or for all employees, including casual employees. So likewise, you know, there are several alternatives. But ideally, if the organization, the ideal answer for this is, the ideal the, uh, policy decision has to be taken regarding which employees to be evaluated. At least permanent employees will, have, you know, must be evaluated. At least every organization must evaluate job performance of permanent employees. At least that decision has to be taken. But in case of a very good organization, a very good organization, in order to uh, uh, in order to increase the the, the 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 possibility of realizing all the purposes or many purposes of performance evaluation, the organization can decide to evaluate all the employees, including temporary employees and casual employees. Of course, the the, the relevant organization must uh, have the right time, also must have the right uh, cost, I mean, must be able to bear the relevant cost. Okay, right, then uh, when should performance evolution be done? When should? There are uh, three approaches. There are three approaches. Uh, first one is fixed time approach. Fixed time approach. So this approach is alternatively called Unitary time approach, unitary time approach, or fixed day approach. So in this approach, the employee performance, the, the, the employee's performance is evaluated within a certain period of time. Within a certain period of time. Okay, so I assume I am the uh, evaluator. 
So then I have uh, 10, evalu uh, 10 subordinates, evaluates uh, subordinates. So then I am supposed to evaluate job performance of these 10 uh, subordinates. So then to do job performance of uh, these 10 subordinates, I decide uh, two days. Then on these two days, I will fully concentrate on perform an evaluation, then I will complete the whole thing. Whole thing. Uh, within those two days, those two days, assume, uh, two days of the uh, third week of December. Third week uh, of, uh, third week of December. Two days of third week of December. Another example, uh, another assume, I do the perform an evaluation twice per year, two times per year. And then third week of, uh, no, first week of July, and then third week of December. Now that is another example. The entire week can be used depending on the uh, number of employees, depending on the number of employees. Of course, if there are many employees to be evaluated, the required time is longer. The required time is longer within one day. Usually, it is not possible. But if there are uh, five employees, maybe maximum ten, uh, it may be uh, possible to do the evaluation by taking one day or two days. Okay, so that is fixed time. That's right, fixed time. So then the other one is, uh, our, you know. Arbit arbitrary dates approach, but before going to that one, you know, so these are the advantages of a fixed time approach. Administration of the evaluation is relatively more convenient because uh, the employee, the, the, the relevant evaluator can forget about all other things and then can fully concentrate on uh, performance evaluation of uh, the subordinates under that evaluator, under that evaluate then it's convenient relatively and then the evaluation is done within a time when the evaluator is generally freed from the matters when the employee is very busy uh, usually the evaluation is not done so therefore the the the, the, the relevant time uh, decided to do the performance evaluation should be a time when the evaluator is not uh, busy of other words and comparison of the evaluations of another advantage, third, third one, comparison of the evaluation of different employees is relatively easy since all employees are evaluated at a certain time. At a certain time. Okay, then these are the disadvantages. It requires the evaluator to spend a lot of time because uh, assume there are two days for evaluation, there are 10 employees to be evaluated. Then within these two days, all the 10 employees uh, will have to be evaluated. So then uh, that evaluation requires the evaluator to spend a lot of time in filling forms and conducting feedback interviews. Okay, so it might lead the evaluator to want to finish it quickly, resulting in occurrence of incomplete and inaccurate evaluation. Now this might, you know, this may be a, a problem. This may be a problem. If the uh, evaluator doesn't have right time, doesn't have the right uh, effort, uh, then the evaluator may decide to or might decide to finish it quickly, finish it quickly. So then, because there are in our example there are ten employees, so then uh, doing it uh, quickly for ten employees is a dangerous thing. So that in in terms of you know accuracy of the evaluation. Because we, we want to do perform an evaluation with the highest level of accuracy, highest amount of accuracy, which is possible. Okay, right. Then uh, arbitrary dates approach, that is the second approach. Under this issue, or whatever, what is the issue, the policy issue, when should the perform an evaluation be done? When should the perform an evaluation be done? Okay, the first one is fixed time approach. This one is arbitrary dates approach. Right. So under this approach, 
evaluating job performance of all employees and under the evaluator is done at different dates, not at the same time. No, on a particular date or on a particular time, the evaluation is done, not done. Assume there are 10 employees and then uh, 10 employees will be evaluated and at, at 10 different times, even at 10 different, uh, 10 different months, it is possible. So usually for uh, this approach, uh, the, the, the date on which the employee was hired is used. That date is called anniversary date. Anniversary date of the employee. So assume there are three employees, A, B, C. A joined the company. A joined the company last year, uh, July 7th. B joined the company, August 7th. C joined the company, uh, October 1st. And then there are uh, three different uh, anniversary dates for the three employees, namely A, B, and C. So therefore, the, or based on these three anniversary dates, then the evaluation is done. Evaluation is done. So then the evaluation with regard to employee A will be done uh, on uh, July 7th. Regarding B, August 7th. Regarding C, uh, yes, uh, what is this? September 1st. Okay, or oh, probably it's okay. No, but no, I think you understood, right? I mean, uh, each employee has a different anniversary date. But in case assume there are 10 employees who were hired on the same day, and then the uh, anniversary date is same. That's not different. But usually, usually, you know, it, it doesn't happen. If there are 10 employees under a particular employee, uh, they have a different anniversary dates. Right. The, these are the advantages. Of course, the uh, advantages of the advantages of this approach will be the disadvantages of the uh, first approach. That is fixed time approach. The disadvantages of this approach will be the advantages of the first approach. We'll look at here. The comparison of performance evaluation among employees becomes more difficult. More difficult. Because uh, uh, different employees will be evaluated at different uh, dates, at different times throughout the evaluation period. Right. Also, perform an evaluation may be unfair and inaccurate owing to organizational and environmental forces. So, assume there are many customers today. And then uh, I am the boss, I am the superior. So today I have to evaluate uh, one employee because uh, I have a lot of work. So then I may spend only 30 minutes and finish the evaluation. So uh, last week I was not that busy. I was not that busy. Then I took, uh, I had to evaluate another employee, another employee. So then to evaluate that employee, I took uh, three hours. Uh, that is possible. So therefore, uh, different time, different effort may happen with regard to uh, different uh, employees or into organizational and environmental courses. Uh, then evalu you know, evaluation depends on the evaluator's mood. Uh, that is also possible. Assume last week I was very happy, then that happiness, uh, you know, happiness could uh, impact the evaluation, the quality of the evaluation of a particular employee. Assume today, I'm very unhappy. That unhappiness may, well, you know, may then that it is possible that unhappiness affects the evaluation badly. Uh, you know, badly uh, for, for, for today's uh, employee. I mean, today I have to evaluate as an employee B. Uh, I am very unhappy. Uh, then my unhappiness uh, may uh, reduce the quality of the evaluation for employee B. 
right okay then uh, job cycle approach that is the third approach under this issue so what is job cycle i told you that is the required time to complete every duty in the job for one time for once job cycle may include a full completion of a major task okay so the for example this one teaching a certain subject for one class and evaluating the teacher's performance job cycle approach another example uh, project engineer assume the employee uh, the, the the relevant engineer has completed the entire project and after completing that project that engineer's job performance is evaluated so that is job cycle approach in fact so as far as these uh, three approaches are concerned the job cycle approach is the best because uh, there is a completion a full completion of the work of the job or of the uh, major work so therefore it is possible to <coughs> determine the success of that uh, completion success of that completion Uh, but the, the difficulty is this uh, every job doesn't have a clear cut job cycle if there are 10 jobs and maybe seven jobs do not have clear cut job cycle for example job of uh, human resource manager job of uh, accountant they don't you know these jobs do not have a clear cut job cycle indeed there are you know, many jobs majority of jobs indeed majority of jobs do not have a clear cut job cycle therefore uh, practically uh, use of uh, this approach job cycle approach is limited uh, however uh, this is the best approach if possible to use uh, as far as the, the these two are the two approaches are concerned fixed time approach and the uh, arbitrary time approach which one is better of course the uh, fixed time approach is better because uh, these advantages you know are more important i mean the the, the, the advantages compared with the advantages of advantages of fixed time approach are more important uh, the advantages of uh arbitrary time approach okay right uh, arbitrary time time approach or arbitrary date approach so so this one uh, there is an alternative term a uh, unitary approach yes unitary time approach is an alternative term for fixed time approach which companies in the world they use a uh, fixed time approach but of course even in sri lanka there are uh, organizations uh, which do not use this one they use the uh, arbitrary dates uh, approach okay uh, right then uh, the issue another one the next issue here how often should perform an evaluation be done this one how often should perform an evaluation be done annually we can do semi annually we can do quarterly we can do monthly we can do bi weekly we can do weekly we can do daily we can do any other time of possible okay so then uh, <clears throat> however doing perform an evaluation daily weekly by weekly uh, is not practical in many cases monthly maybe in case of uh, job evaluation of production employees sales employees it is possible to use uh, it is possible to do perform an evaluation monthly in quarterly uh, semi annual 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 yes uh, <clears throat> there are companies uh, they Uh, do uh, perform an evaluation annually, but uh, the theory of HRM 
suggest to do perform an evaluation semi annually semi annually uh, because of the uh, major reason that is the possibility of giving two feedback two discussion okay if you if you refer to that uh, perform an evaluation model there is a step called uh, discussion so after doing perform an evaluation of any employee it is essential to have a discussion of the evaluation done with regard to that uh, relevant employee whose performance was evaluated so normally the evaluator and the uh, evaluator so between these two people there must be a discussion after evaluation after evaluation so then uh, if the evaluation is done semi annually so that means there are two opportunities of giving feedback having discussion having discussion but if you do annually only one opportunity of giving discussion and having feedback so have giving two feedback is always better than giving one feedback one uh, feedback because uh, during the feedback you know information about uh, strength of the employee information about weaknesses of the employee that is given the employee can you know raise question can get advice right okay then uh, who should do perform an evaluation uh, that is uh, another issue that is another issue uh, you have to learn you have to learn okay uh, have a serious look at this picture serious look at this picture okay here 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 the you or the relevant employee assume the relevant employee is you then your evaluation can be done by various parties so you can see here so let me explain it So this is you. Okay, here there is a person who is peer, who is a peer. Here there is a person who is also a peer. So peers can do your performance evaluation. Then immediate superior, you are reported to. You are under this immediate superior. Who can do? Who can do uh, job uh, performance evaluation relating to this? And also here down there are people who are subordinates. Assume you are a manager. The manager has a set of subordinates to be managed. Then these subordinates also can do your performance evaluation. You also can do your performance evaluation. That is called self evaluation, right? Okay. Then here you can see uh, immediate superior superior. Immediate superior superior. This is immediate superior. This is immediate superior superior. So immediate superior superior also can do the uh, can do uh, job performance uh, evaluation. Then the committee that is consisting of several evaluators who are usually senior managers. That committee can do performance evaluation of your your job performance your job performance evaluation. Can be done by this committee, and also here there are customers. Customers also can do your performance evaluation. So then, by this figure, you must be able to understand that there are several parties who can do an employee's job performance evaluation, an employee's job performance evaluation. So that means there are different types of evaluators. Different types of evaluators who can be used to do perform an evaluation of a particular employee. So therefore, there are different alternatives. That's why uh, it is in, uh, it is essential to take a policy decision. So this is the policy. Assume uh, ABC company. Uh, it is the policy of ABC company to, uh, to do perform an evaluation by using by using the immediate support. Immediate superior. 
that is one example of a policy. Or another example, it is the policy of uh, it is the policy of doing perform an evaluation by uh, two evaluators by two evaluators that is immediate superior and immediate superior superior immediate superiors superior okay uh, the best companies in the world you know, they are uh, fortune companies what do they do of course they use four evaluators they use four evaluators to do the job performance of one particular employee four evaluators there is a special technical term for this evaluation that is called a 360 degree evaluation 360 degree evaluation it has at least four evaluators so assume right this is you know assume this is uh, the university teacher okay now uh, who should do perform an evaluation of that university teacher university teacher okay so then uh, one party you know that university teacher himself or herself can do the performance evaluation party one then party two uh, the you know head of the department so immediate superior is the head of the department then head of the department can do the uh, job performance evaluation and then the the immediate, uh, immediate superior superior dean of the faculty then the dean of the faculty can do the job performance of the university teacher and then the students here he assumed the, uh, the university teacher uh, has the students so then the students can do the evaluation of uh, their teacher so therefore we can use four parties uh, <clears throat> the teacher himself or herself, uh, head of the department, dean of the faculty, and then uh, students, four parties. Then these four parties can be utilized to do the job performance evaluation of one university teacher. Because there are uh, several parties involved, the, you know, the advantages advantages of using each party can be minimized not minimized really maximized we don't minimize advantages we are supposed to maximize advantages because each each soul has advantages and disadvantages okay the, the time is not sufficient but anyway you are supposed to get uh, a general understanding of this issue not a very in-depth understanding uh, then let me uh, take this example immediate support right immediate take this party immediate uh, superior or immediate supervisor so what are the advantages of using immediate uh, superior as the evaluator one major advantage is this immediate superior is the person who has the highest amount of information about the employee about the employee compared with others for example immediate superior superior doesn't have that highest amount of uh, information about the employee because the immediate superior is the person you know who is supervising directly who is supervising directly therefore the immediate superior has the highest chance of observing the employee then the highest amount of information highest amount of information the first time uh, experience about dealing with the employee is there you know, on the part of the immediate uh, superior now, that is also an advantage that is also an advantage then the uh, also the immediate superior knows uh, the disturbances environmental problems okay during the evaluation period during the evaluation period you know, better understanding about such things is possessed by the immediate superior compared with other superiors you know senior people but that's also an advantage well, what is what is a major disadvantage of using immediate superior as an evaluator if the immediate superior is a contaminated person oh, that is terrible 
most likely the immediate superior's evaluation is not going to be true, not going to be accurate. If the immediate superior wants to destroy the employee, uh, wants to wants to block the development, career development of the employee, then the immediate superior uh, gives a bad evaluation. So actually, the the employee, this employee whose uh, performance is being evaluated, this employee was a high performer during the evaluation period. But this immediate superior's evaluation doesn't indicate that this person is a high performer. It does indicate that this person is an average performer. That is possible if the immediate superior is corrupt. If the immediate superior has contaminated bad objectives. Okay, so, all right. Also, if there's a bad relationship between immediate superior and uh, relevant employee, then the use of immediate superior is dangerous. It is not good. But anyway, uh, the, you know, what does a very good company do? Or what do the best companies do? At least they use two evaluators. Among the two, you know, two evaluators. So the use of immediate superior, definitely it is there. So that means a good company uses the immediate superior as an evaluator because of the major advantage. That is, the immediate superior is the person who has the highest chance of observing the relevant employee, the resulting in having the highest amount of information about how well the particular employee has performed within that particular period of time and also how far that employee has performed within that particular period of time under evaluation. So therefore, the use of immediate superior is there. In addition to the use of immediate superior, maybe immediate superior supine or custom or committee okay so therefore best companies in the world as i mentioned uh, you know, i mentioned previously the 360 degree that means four evaluators are used but of course in sri lanka there are organizations which don't do performance evaluation seriously even by using one evaluator so this is an essential function, uh, dear students. So therefore, this is a very important function. We, we learn many purposes, a variety of uh, utility, variety of purposes. We can achieve uh, by doing performance evaluation. So therefore, uh, the theory of HRM suggests it is uh, compulsory for every organization to do performance evaluation, performance evaluation, at least by using immediate superior and Another evaluator, immediate superior, and another evaluator. Okay. Right now, <clears throat> shall we go to uh, the third step? That also needs to be learned by you uh, to a certain extent. Establish criteria and standards of performance evaluation. Without the right criteria, without right standards, it is not possible to do uh, accurate performance evaluation. Accurate performance evaluation. Okay, so the criteria. So what are the criteria? Criteria are the factors for evaluation. Factors for evaluation. They are the dimensions of performance upon which an employee is evaluated. You can see here the definition, the definition given by Professor Ivanswich, and also definition given by Professor Blue. Fact, the factors, the criteria, the factors on which an employee is evaluated. Okay, so then uh, performance evaluation criterion can be defined as a measure or factor of identifying success of job performance. Success of job performance right uh, basically uh, these performance evaluation criteria 
are classified into two categories objective criteria and subjective criteria so what are objective criteria what are objective criteria objective criteria are factors of evaluation that are quantifiable distinctly that are quantifiable now objective criteria are easy to quantify easy to measure for example look at this this is an example the number of units sold by a salesman an object you know an objective criterion then also objective criteria are verifiable by other for instance you know if two sales executives evaluate a salesman's unit sold uh, each executive gets the same number of units sold so that means there you know there should not be variation between the two evaluations of the two sales executives so that is possible in case of objective criteria in case of objective criteria if two evaluators give two ratings two evaluations then that is not good so that can happen in case of subjective criteria subjective criteria for example as you uh, our salesman our salesman uh, for the last month could say uh, 100 units then there are two Uh, sales uh, evaluators, and then they come and do the evaluation. Assume both do uh, accurately the evaluation, and both will get the finding that uh, the relevant sales uh, person uh, could sell hundred units. So then, criteria, you know, objective criteria, verifiable by others, verifiable by others. You know, another another way of uh, another way of uh, <clears throat> describing and explaining this for uh, assume uh, <clears throat> okay there is a scientist you no know? so we are going to evaluate the job performance of that scientist so that scientist uh, tells that the scientist uh, tells that the scientist did uh, 10 research study and then uh, discovered 10 research findings in research finding then i am one evaluator you are the another evaluator then both of us you know can go and then check whether this scientist has actually uh, done 10 research study and then uh, has found 10 uh, research findings it, it is possible it is possible uh, in case of the number of research studies done and the number of findings discovered uh, they are objective objective criteria right look at this ex, uh, exhibit go to this exhibit that gives examples of objective criteria the job here is university lecture you can see criteria number of lectures done during the academic year number of topics covered and go to second job salesman number of units sold and number of new customers created and third job production work number of units produced number of defects and project engineering total cost of completing a project number of projects completed there are two criteria here which are objective then uh, uh, yes uh, fifth job okay fifth job what is that uh, medical expert then what are objective criteria number of patient cured and number of hours of consultation okay now shall we go to subjective criteria there are factors of evaluation uh, that are not quantifiable distinct so subjective criteria are difficult to measure difficult to define difficult to verify but objective criteria easy to measure easy to define easy to verify easy to verify okay right uh, <clears throat> for example look at this example two sales uh, two sales executive evaluate the sales persons 
salesman so corporate so each uh, executive may not get the same range there may be variations between two evaluations of the executive because of the subjectivity of the criteria okay so then uh, go to this exhibit 2 that gives uh, examples of subjective criteria the same judge under uh, objective criteria you know the lecturer and then what are the subjective criteria here there are two given sensitivity to the students needs and subject knowledge difficult to measure difficult to verify difficult to uh, define then sales one the second job cooperation and interpersonal relations third job production work dependability and housekeeping then fourth job project engineer technical ability and originality of the engineer difficult to define difficult to measure difficult to verify the medical expert here pity towards patient and commitment to work okay right so then <clears throat> read this uh, this sentence carefully and try to understand it is not appropriate to use only subjective criteria for performance evaluation because they are more prone to certain kinds of errors associated with evaluation so these errors you no know, i will teach you later uh, at the end yes as the last uh, sub topic yes i will discuss about uh, errors associated with evaluators when doing uh, performance evaluation so therefore uh, okay the question is here uh, in practice should we use both subjective criteria and objective criteria to do performance evaluation the answer is clear yes we have to use both subjective criteria and objective criteria because use of subjective criteria is uh, you know is beneficial for identifying uh, training needs of the employee for developing employees subjective criteria for the objective criteria yes <clears throat> uh, really uh, i mean they are directly uh, relating to the, uh, the number of units produced right uh, however however uh, remember this also uh, this one here performance evaluation based on subjective criteria is subjective rather than objective nevertheless when using subjective criteria use of some objective indicators as many as possible is appropriate so assume we use uh, this criteria uh, discipline this one subject to criterion of discipline then we can use you know these indicators to measure these indicators to measure number of uh, yes here the number of rules violation the number of serious punishment the number of complaints are uh, these objective indicators can be used to measure that subjective criteria that is discipline so therefore I have, you know if there are five subjective criteria then uh, it is important to develop certain objective indicators to measure or uh, to reflect the the, the, the the employee's performance on this subjective criteria okay read this uh, professor tripathi is uh, mentioning it's very important to understand uh, the disadvantages of you know dangers of using only objective criteria so it should be remembered that all the objective measures of performance are intuitively attractive they often suffer from several uh, glaring weaknesses the most serious of which are performance performance unreliability and modification of performance by situational characteristics for example rupee value of shares is influenced by uh, numerous factors beyond a particular sales person's control for example territory location 
number of accounts in, ter in the territory, nature of the competition, distances between accounts, price, and quality of product, and so forth. So forth. Can you understand? So I assume, you know, we take, you know, okay, uh, we take uh, two sales people. Okay, two sales people, uh, person A, person B. Person A, person B. Then uh, one objective criterion is the number of units sold. Okay. For the last one, assume, person A, person A, A, could, could sell 100. Person B could sell uh, 75. Then as, as far as this criterion is concerned, then uh, we can judge that uh, salesperson A is better than salesperson B. Salesperson B. But is this really true? Is this really true? Assume here, assume here, the, the, the how many accounts, so how many customers, how many customers, assume there are, uh, there are thousand customers. So among the thousand customers, salesman A could say only, uh, only hundred. But here the person B, there are only uh, only uh, hundred customers are available in that sales uh, you know, location. In that sales location, you know, uh, so in which uh, this person is responsible for selling. But even though there are 100 customers, this person could sell 75. Then who is better? Really, B is better than A. B is better than A. Okay, you can, uh, you can calculate as a per percentage also. So sales number per customer. So you can calculate. Okay. So the <clears throat> right. Uh, so therefore, you know, there may be factors, you know, there may be factors which the relevant employee cannot control. The relevant employee cannot uh, control. So therefore, uh, only use of uh, objective criteria is not recommended. Is not uh, recommended. For example, assume, you know, uh, another, another example. Let us take two production employees, two production employees, right? So then uh, uh, each production employee uses a particular machine, okay? So then last month, assume one production employee, production employee A uh, could uh, produce uh, 100 units, then production Employee B could produce only 70. But with regard to the production employee, employee B, relating to the machine, there was a problem. And that's why uh, the, that uh, production employee B could sell only, or could, could produce only uh, 75 units. Otherwise, I show, he could have produced, who could have produced 150, 150. So therefore, there may be uh, you know, uncontrollable factors where, uh, which can affect the performance on objective criteria. So therefore, in addition to tripartis above analysis, only objective criteria are not sufficient to achieve many purposes of performance evolution, especially development purposes. Okay, I mentioned this previously, right? Identify strengths and weaknesses and to give feedback. Okay. So, therefore, the answer is this uh, for this uh, for the question should we use both subjective criteria and objective criteria? Yes, clear. The clear answer is that we have to use both. We have to use both. Uh, another another <coughs> principle is as many as you know, as uh, many as possible, uh, use a uh, higher number of objective criteria. Another principle is uh, when we use subjective criteria, level best we have to try to measure 
subjective criteria by using certain objective uh, indicators. Certain objective indicators. Also, another principle that I would like to give here under criteria success of job performance is a multiple concept. So that means uh, it has many faces. It has many faces, therefore, uh, success of job performance is multifaceted. Use of one criterion is not sufficient. In order to uh, evaluate job performance fully, we have to use more than one criterion. More than one criterion. For example, let us take success of uh, this lecture. You want to assess success of this lecture. Uh, so if you if you if you use only one criterion like my voice my voice whether the voice is clear or not that is only one criterion that indicates only one aspect of the success the total success of uh, lecture so what are the other aspects which are perhaps you know not perhaps which are more important quality of teaching you know content content of the lecture that is very, very important. You know? The principles, the examples, the models, the definitions, the figures, explaining, describing, you know? uh, they, <clears throat> they are in the content. Uh, that is more important than the voice. That is more important than the coloring. Coloring of the, you know, uh, these uh, sentences, you know, pictures. Okay, so therefore, Success of job performance has several aspects. Therefore, uh, the theory of HRI uh, suggests to use more than one criteria to evaluate job performance. Maybe 10 criteria, even 15 criteria, using 15 criteria is possible, depending on the uh, nature of the job, also the time available for doing performance evaluation. Okay, uh, activity now 9.1. Identify and mention five objective criteria and five, sorry, five subjective criteria and five objective criteria which can be used to evaluate performance of a university lecture. University lecture. Okay, five subjective criteria. Five subjective criteria. Theoretical. Theoretical uh, competence. So competence includes both knowledge and skill. Theoretical competence of the subject. Of the subject. Okay. Then uh, practical. Theoretical competence. Then practical competence. Practical competence. Practical competence. Then, uh, <clears throat> yes, attitude. Attitude of the teacher. Attitude towards the students. Okay. Attitude towards the students. That is another subject to uh, criterion. Then, uh, <clears throat> quality. Quality of lecturing. Quality of lecturing. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> quality of uh, learning material. Freud. Freud. Uh, these are subjective criteria. Subjective criteria. Okay. Uh, That can be used to evaluate uh, job performance of a university lecture. Okay, right. Then, what are the objective criteria? Number of uh, lectures done. 
number of uh, applications number of applications that Num number of uh, uh, books uh, written number of books uh, uh, written then uh, number of uh, number of research studies done number of research provision done so likewise there are many uh, objective <coughs> criteria because time is limited okay right so likewise you know with regard to any job it is possible to have a set of uh, subjective criteria as well as a set of objective uh, criteria now performance evaluation scan right with regard to you know with regard to each criterion there should be standard so what do you mean by standard so it is essential to identify performance evaluation standard in order to assess how well and how far putaran hondin sa putaran durakar employees are performing their job by using standards performance criteria performance evaluation criteria take on a range of values maybe from 1 to 5 maybe from 1 to 10 maybe from 1 to 100 like as a range of values range of values performance evaluation standards indicate rating scales so these scales should be developed uh, systematically and fair so look at this example so what is the criterion criterion of number of units sold uh, this is the criterion right this is the criterion okay so then see is exam relevant standards relating to that criteria so how many standards here there are five standards so these are called uh, descriptive standards excellent good average poor very poor okay so these are you know, so the what do you mean by excellent units between 81 and 100 so these are called uh, quantitative standards right between 81 and 100 that is excellent so assume our employee could sell 90 units in the last month and then his performance is excellent or her performance is excellent okay so then good between 80 between 61 and 80 average between 41 and 60 poor between 21 and 40 very poor between 1 and 20 okay right then this is another example which is more demanding more demanding because the average performance here is satisfactory that is between 60 and uh, 69 but here the average performance is uh, between uh, 41 and 60 41 and 60 so then uh, compared with the example uh, to uh, this example is not that demanding you know in order to get an average performance uh, it is necessary to sell only 41 41 but here in order to get an average performance it is uh, necessary to uh, sell uh, at least uh, 60 at least 60 okay so this uh, this example is more suitable for an organization which has a, a severe competition severe competition also uh, also this example is uh, suitable for a situation where the organization you know has been working successfully and achieved uh, several successes and then the organization wanted to achieve progress of success i mean to be better in terms of success and then uh, this example is uh, suitable 
Okay, here you can see, look at this image. Outstanding, excellent, good, average, poor. So here the very poor uh, standard is missing, but here there are uh, five standards. Okay, think of your examination. Think of your examination. Okay, so then for your examination, so there are standards. A plus, A, B plus, B, B minus, C plus, you know, uh, C minus, C, D, D minus, E, all are standards. All are standards. Okay, so because of standards, then remember performance evaluation criteria take on a range of values. Range of values. So standards reflect different levels of success with regard to with regard to uh, a performance evaluation criteria. Performance evaluation criteria. For example, assume number of lectures. If you take number of lectures, okay, the number of lectures. What are the <coughs> standards that we can develop? Number of lectures. Of course, systematically, we have to do that. The intervals should be consistent among the levels, among the standards. Okay, we can say excellent. Excellent, uh, excellent, the number of, assume uh, the relevant uh, university teacher uh, has been given the target of lecturing, doing, doing uh, 15 lectures, 15 lectures. So then if uh, all the lectures were done, uh, that is excellent performance. An excellent problem. Then good performance, 14 lectures done. Then uh, satisfactory performance, satisfactory performance, 13 lectures. Then poor performance, uh, 12 lectures. Then very poor performance, very poor performance, uh, below 12, below, below, below below 12. Okay, this is one example of standards relating to the criteria, not the number of lectures, number of lectures. Okay, another more demand, you know, okay, this is more demanding. That's only less, less demanding. Excellent. Uh, between, yes. 13 and 15. The lecturer taught uh, 13 lectures. Uh, that is considered as excellent. 14 also as excellent. 15, of course, as excellent. Then uh, good performance. Good performance. Uh, good. Good performance between uh, between uh, 10 and 12. 10 and 12. Then uh, satisfactory. That is. Uh, factory performance uh, between uh, seven and seven and nine. Then uh, poor performance, poor performance uh, between uh, four and uh, six, four and six. Then very poor performance, very poor performance uh, below four. Okay, this is uh, this is less demand. Okay. This is an example. This is an example which is not more demanding, which is less demanding. Because the satisfactory this this one is more demanding.